didn't actually leave school at 15. I suppose you could say more to the point that they asked me to leave and I said, OK. And they said, don't come back. And I said, that's even better. <laughs> um, and I just used to read all the time. I always wanted to be a writer um, because I always loved books so much. So I think writing for me was a really big part of my life. Um, I used to write all the time. I wrote my first novel when I was 14, nearly 15. And I wrote another novel at 18. And then when I was 21, I wrote Dangerous Lady. And I think most people who love books you know, want to write a book. So it was always my dream just to see my name on the cover of a book. I didn't realise it would be on so many. Um, so I think I was very lucky because I achieved my dreams and so many people don't get the opportunity. I think for me as a teenager, I think the biggest challenge of all was sort of getting pregnant when I did so early. I mean, I had my son in 1978 when it was still really, really terrible, you know, those days to have a baby and not be married. My mum, one of our neighbours was a real old bitch and I remember her saying to me, you know, does he look like your husband? And I said, no, he looks like his father. <laughs> Shut her up. Um, and you had to be quite brave then to have a baby and not be married, you know. Um, and for me, it was the best thing I've ever done in my life because I'd been pretty aimless up to then clubbing and you know I took any job that was going and I didn't I had no education I was lots of things I wanted to do but I wasn't qualified to do and then when I had my son Christopher uh, 18 just 19 he sort of gave me a focus and I had something to work for and I think some people are just built like that you won't do things for yourself but you work for your children so for me it was a big challenge but it was also one of the best things I've ever done in my life. I think at first when I had Chris, there was quite a lot of animosity from people. I mean, one of my friend's mums told her that she couldn't hang around with me no more because I'd had a baby. Years later, she turned up on a book signing, you know, and she said, I just can't believe every time we'd see you, Martina, you was going to work or... And, you know, it's really strange because even now when I see friends I haven't seen for 20 years, the first thing they say is, how's Chris? And, I mean, he's nearly 37, you know, he runs his own company. Well, he runs my film company and television company. We have a record company as well. Um, we worked very well together. I lost my son's father when he was seven months old, so it was always only just me and him. It was always just me and him. So I think what started out is, you know, my poor mum saying to me, oh, you know, what are you going to do? You're so young. But for me, I turned it into a positive. And I think that's one thing my nan used to say. My nan, Lachlan, she was Irish, all my family were Irish, and she'd come for the weekend and stayed for 11 years. She had the greatest sound you could ever hear, and she used to say, turn something into a positive, you know, just turn it into a positive. And I think, she also used to say, when you walk into a room, walk in like you own the place, and one day the chances are you will. <laughs> and I think that's really great, because she sort of tried to give us girls a lot of confidence, you know. If a young woman spoke to me, I mean, I've got a daughter of 17, so I know what it's like when girls go through their stage of no confidence and everything. I think for me, I would say confidence comes from inside. It's not about what you're wearing. I mean, clothes do help. But frame of mind for me, when I used to go for jobs, I used to go in there and I used to put a complete big front on and I used to, you know, walk in, I'd find out everything I could about the job and make sure that I got the job. Um, and I'd be so unconfident. And I, but inside, I just wanted to die. But outside, I looked very confident. And I think that a, is a great thing if you can achieve that. I used to look in the mirror and answer questions I thought they'd ask me. <laughs> I know it sounds mad, but that sort of worked for me. When I'd done my first big book signing, I was sick. And I was like, you know, physically sick. But then I went out there and I just thought, well, this is, you've got to do this. It's something you've got to do. And I think that's part of making your confidence is telling yourself, if I do this, this will get me something else. And I think the most important thing for young women is to be confident and be confident in yourself. If you've got an opinion, give it. If you've got a thought about something, express it. If you've got an idea, try and make it work. I'm still not as confident as people think I am, especially if it's like a, a, a big event, like at the Book Awards or something. The first time I won an award, I just really wanted to go home, wanted to get in the cab and go home and get someone else to go and get it. And my agent said to me, this is what you've worked towards, Tina, you know, you, you're being recognised and it's an honour and go and do it. And the strange thing is, and I'll say this to anybody, young woman or young man, once you're in the position, something takes over and somehow or other you manage to get through it. And I think that's the best advice, is just go and do your best. And as long as you know you've done the best that you can, no one else can say a word to you about it.
you know, Dangerous Lady, my first book, was about a woman in a man's world, in a criminal underworld. I, I mean, I'm a crime author, but I write from the point of view of the criminal. I don't have a policeman. I've got a couple of books with Kate Burroughs in, obviously, but most of my books are from the, the criminal perspective, which I know more about that kind of life, obviously, than I do about the police. But so I think when sort of my agent got Dangerous Lady, I remember him ringing me up and he said to me, um, you know, I'm going to auction this book with four publishers and I assumed that happened to everybody. And I can remember hoovering in my little tiny house and I was hoovering away and I was daydreaming that I'd got like £2,000. I'm thinking I'm going to take driving lessons, take my Christmas holiday, do you, you know, all the things you daydream. And when they rang up, you know, and he said, you know, I went to visit Headline, who are now my publishers, were the first publishers I went for lunch. And I was so nervous. And Sue Fletcher, who became my editor, who owned Headline, she kept filling me up with red wine. I've never drunk wine in my life. Only at mass, you know, sort of thing. So I got a bit drunk. And I thought they, you know, they'd ask me about Dangerous Lady. And they didn't. They said, what's the next book? And I just made it up on the spot. And again, it's that false confidence, you know. And I said, well, I'll think of doing this and that and made the book up. Um, and then Dali rang up and he said, Headline have made a preemptive bid to call the auction off of £150,000. And I said to him, are you sure it was me? And I was like, oh my God. For me, and I'd say to anybody, especially young women, it's the work ethic, you must work. My dad always, my nanny Lachlan used to say, get a good pair of shoes and a good mattress, because when you're not in one, you're in the other. And my mum used to say, get a job you like, because you're going to be going there an awful lot. And I think that stood me in good stead for my life. And Dangerous Lady was a big hit, went to number four. It was one of the first books that ever came out as a paperback original. No one had done it before. There was no hardback. Um, and I remember going in WH Smith's and there I was. And I didn't even change my name. That's because I didn't think I'd get published. And there was Catherine Cookson, Chili Cooper, everybody. Do you know what I mean? I was like, oh, why did I change my name? But of course, it was the best thing for me because I was there with all the C's. <laughs> so, you know, people were finding my book there, you know. Um, and I don't think you manage with the more successful you get. I think what you, you actually do is you learn how to, to work with it, you know, and, and take your opportunities. And as the time went on, I looked for opportunities like with the television or the theatre or the film. Oh. One of the biggest, biggest regrets of my life is that I didn't, I didn't use, we've got the best education system in the world in this country and we very rarely use it. You know, and but I come from a, an area, an environment where it, you was a girl, you wasn't expected to be academic anyway. You know, and I can remember um, years ago, one of our teachers at one of my schools said to my mum, you know, she could go to university. And my mum said, but why would you want to do that? And I think that pretty much sums it all up. Where my, her mother, my nanny, I lock her, who lived with us all those years, she was very much a feminist and before her time. She used to say, I lived in Ireland all that, and I had three children, which, as far as she was concerned, that was really fine, the church and everybody, you know what I mean? Not having 15, like my dad's sister. Um, and I think she was a very big influence in my life, because she used to say, you can do anything you want. <laughs> I'd love, I would love to be a young woman today instead of the age I am. I think there's a lot of pressure on young women today, far more pressure than there was when I was a girl. Um, I think there's so much pressure to look perfect, be perfect, have a baby and go straight into a size eight. You know, and all this. I think that, that frightens me. I also think there's a lot of pressure on young women that, you know, looks are so important and not education. But I also think for young women today, I think the emphasis should be more on education. Even if it's adult education, you didn't do very well at school, get yourself up and out, you know, and find that. And find your niche. I think everybody's got something that they're good at. It's finding your niche, you know. And generally things that you're good at are things that you really enjoy. Yeah. Um, I think if I could change one thing about how young women are perceived, especially these days, I think for me the thing that I would change is the belief that in themselves that they, you know, they're not valuable enough to do something with their lives and you have to look a certain way or be a certain way. I think the one thing I would change is that I would put more of the emphasis on how clever you are you know, and, and how compassionate you are and what you've got going on in your life. I think the Young Women's Trust is really, really important because I think it's, it's somewhere for people to find like-minded individuals. The one thing that I felt when I, on my own with my son, I was living in a council flat, and we, I mean, those days you didn't get any furniture or anything, you know, you, I slept on the floor of my kitchen for a long time, was that you were very isolated, you can be very isolated. And I think anything that brings young women together and meet like-minded people, people who can mentor you or talk to you, 
and give you give you choices can only be a wonderful thing. I wish there'd been more like it when I was on my own with my son.